last homework of unit six, solving differential equations using separation of variables, only this time we find we'll be using logs and e's frequently. So step one is going to be the same as uh, last class. We're going to get our y's with dy and move our dx to be with our x's. So y's cancel here. I'll have 2x dx on the right side and 1 over y dy. I'm going to take the antiderivative of both sides. And the antiderivative of 1 over y, we remember, is log absolute y. We cannot use the power rule for y to the negative first. It doesn't work. It works for every other uh, exponent, though, so remind yourselves of that. Um, the right side, don't forget your plus c. Now, to solve for y, we want our solutions in y equals f of x form. I'll take e to the power of both sides to get rid of the log. When we take e to the power of the right side, make sure the c is in the power of e. Now you're going to get absolute y is equal to e to the x squared plus c. We know through exponent rules that you could write this as e to the c times e to the x squared. Right? It's the whole x squared times x cubed equals x to the 2 plus 3. We are taking x to the 2 plus 3 and turning it into that. The reason why we do this is because e to the c is just a c. Now, we can get rid of the absolute value by making this a plus or minus, but really we can just ignore the absolute value when we're finding c. Again, we want a function, so we don't want a plus or minus, so instead, just like ignore the absolute value, solve for c. Well, in this situation, we see why it's advantageous to have the c here, because e to the 0 is just 1, and I'll get c is equal to 4. So that leaves me with my particular solution, y equals 4e to the x squared. Okay. Similar beginning, divide by y, multiply by dx. And then take the antiderivative of both sides. I'll get log absolute y equals negative cosine's derivative is positive sine plus c. I have 0, 2, but let's go ahead and get rid of the log by taking e to the power of both sides. Making sure I take the entire right side as a power of e. Know that you can rewrite e to the negative cos x plus c as e to c times e to the negative cos x, which gives you c e to the negative cos x. Although f of 0 is equal to 2, we can ignore the plus or minus. Um, let's, like, I hope I have a negative somewhere in here. I think I do. Hmm. Not all of them, but um, even if this was a negative 2, you would ignore this and say negative 2 equals C E to the negative cos of 0. Okay, so like don't worry about the absolute value. Ignore don't use. Okay, so it is just two, so I don't want people to freak out. We'll get two equals c e to the negative first. Now, how do you solve for c? Well, e to the negative first can be written as c over e. 
And then you could just multiply both sides by E, giving you 2E equals C. Giving you your solution, Y equals 2E, E to the negative cos X. Now, what you could do here, since this is E to the first times E to the negative cos X, you'll find you would get 2E to the negative cos X plus 1. Uh, this is something that you may have to be able to do uh, for like a multiple choice problem. Understand that if you have an e to a power times e to another power, that you can add the powers together. Again, that's just my exponent rules. This is a good one. So again, get rid of the y. Get rid of the dx. So dx is going with our x's. Y's are going with dy. I have 1 over y dy equals 1 over x dx. Okay, take the antiderivative of both sides. We get log absolute y equals log absolute x plus c. Now, here's where it's tricky. If I took e to the power of both sides, now on the left side, yes, the, the log will go away. You just have absolute y. But on the right side, it is not absolute x plus c. This is wrong. Because you are taking the entire side to the power of e, which means you would have to write it as e to the log absolute x plus c. And now watch what you can do simplifying using exponent rules. This can be written as e to the c times e to the log absolute x, which can then be written as c times absolute x. So it's not c plus, it's c times. So I get absolute y equals c times absolute x. I'm told f of 1 is 3. I can ignore these things. I get c is 3. So I will get y equals 3. So it's probably confusing this, like when do absolutes disappear? Um, really what we are doing is we're taking this y and we're making the right side a plus or minus. Okay? But we don't want a plus or minus. When I plug in 1 for x, I better get 3 for y. Now this absolute value doesn't disappear. This stays, but this is gone. It's when I plug in 3 and 1 that I'm going to ignore this so that I can get the correct value. Now, that means I would be taking the absolute value of 1 to get 1. I get C is 3, but we'll see that the correct solution will be involving the absolute X. Okay. I wish we had some width. Uh, we'll have some. All right. Here I'm going to have to divide by e to the y, multiply by dx. Get 1 over e to the y dy equals 2x minus 3 dx. I'm going to take the antiderivative of both sides. Now, we've done this in the past, the antiderivative of 1 over e to the y. The only way we could do it is to write it as e to the negative y. And now this is an antiderivative kind of, of f of ax plus b, where we take the antiderivative of the outside, and then don't forget to multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient of our variable. So the antiderivative ends up being negative e to the negative y. That'll be equal to the antiderivative, which is x squared minus 3x. Don't forget your plus c. Now I need to solve for y. Let's take the opposite of both sides. Gets baked into the plus c. And I'm ready to take the natural log of both sides. Remembering, you take the natural log of the entire side. You can't take the natural log until you just have positive e 
All right, or else you're going to have to do some some log rules to simplify things. But don't do that. Instead, log of positive e, I get negative y equals the natural log of negative x squared plus 3x plus c. And you might as well just solve for y here. I got negative log negative x squared plus 3x plus c. Let's see if I can find a nice c. f of 0 is equal to 3. 3 is equal to negative log c. Yeah, I can do it. Okay, to solve for c, take the opposite of both sides. Isolate the logarithm. Take e to the power of both sides. I'll get c is equal to e to the negative third. Giving me my solution, y equals negative log negative x squared plus 3x plus 1 over e cubed. Move this over. Okay, next one. This one is um, it seems to be tricky in terms of separating our variables. <clears throat> we have x and y up in the exponent of e. Uh, the trick to this is kind of what we've been using is our exponent rules to separate things. This is e to the x times e to the y. And again, I can get rid of the y's, move them to the left side, and get rid of the dx, move it to the right side. So that's gone, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. 1 over e to the y dy equals e to the x dx. We just took the antiderivative of 1 over e to the y. Make sure we understand why it's negative e to the negative y. Antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. Don't forget your plus c. Got to solve for y. <coughs> take the opposite of both sides. It gets baked into the c. Then take the natural log of both sides. giving me <coughs> negative y equals log of negative e to the x plus c. And again, solve for y by taking the opposite of both sides. Again, get f of 0 is equal to negative log 3. So I got negative log 3 equals negative log negative e to the 0 plus c. So negative log 3 equals negative log, negative e to the 0 will be negative 1 plus c. The negative logs will essentially cancel, like make an opposite of both sides, take e to the power of both sides, and you get 3 equals negative 1 plus c. c will equal 4. Giving me my solution, y equals negative log, negative e to the x plus 4. It's a great one. Great question here um, because we don't necessarily need X's and Y's. Sometimes we can just have Y's. Sometimes we can just have X's. We've already done ones with just X's. Just take the antiderivative. Let me just get Y equals. But if we just have Y's, here's my uh, advice. Leave the constant. Move the Y. Watch Y. Because... 1 over y, antiderivative, easy. Negative 3 is antiderivative, also easy. So if we have something like that, we're good to go. Okay, so if you see no x's, don't, don't fret. You would take the antiderivative of negative 3 with respect to x to get negative 3x. Again, we should start to be comfortable with this process of taking e to the power of both sides. You get absolute y is equal to e to the negative 3x plus c, which can turn into e to the c times e to the negative 3x, which can turn into c e to the negative 3x. We'll just get rid of the absolute value when we solve for the correct c. We don't want a plus or minus because we want a function. 
3 equals C E to the negative third. Again, you could divide, you could write this as C over E to the third, and then multiply both sides by E to the third to get 3 E to the third. That gives you your solution, Y equals 3 E cubed times E to the negative 3X. But again, it might, for a multiple choice question, require you to understand that using your exponent properties, you can add these two exponents together. All right, upping our game a little bit. This will be a little bit more complicated. I'm going to divide by 3 minus 2y. I'm going to multiply by dx. Okay, I shouldn't have to show you that, so I'm not. But now I'm ready to take the antiderivative. This is like 3 minus 2y to the negative first. So we're going to need to use the logarithm for the antiderivative. But we're going to recall from two classes ago how it would be the log absolute of my inside, but then multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient of your variable inside. So this times 1 half is very, very necessary. And we remember from two classes ago why it's necessary. If you don't remember, Go back to the second lesson of this unit to understand why you need a negative one half. Antiderivative of sine two x. It'll be negative cos two x, but don't forget you will need a one half as well because of the two. I probably should have changed the uh, the numbers here so that it's different, so it doesn't confuse you. But hopefully we we're good with that. I think I did it on purpose so that when you multiply both sides by negative 2, you get log absolute 3 minus 2y equals positive cosine 2x plus c. Okay? So if you did it incorrectly and you forgot the negative 1 half, so you're not going to get this positive cosine. So please make sure you pay attention to this. All right. We are ready to start solving. I'll take e to the power of both sides. Make sure the c goes up there. This is equal to e to the cos 2x times e to the c, which is c e to the cos 2x. Ignore the Absolute value, give this a plus or minus. Ignore the plus or minus when you plug in 0, 2. So I got 3 minus 4 equals C E to the cos 0. That is negative 1 equals C E. Cos 0 is 1. So C is equal to negative 1 over E. Okay, so that gives me 3 minus 2y equals, which is negative 1 e to the negative first. Negative e to the negative first, e to the cos 2x. Subtract 3 divided by negative 2. Maybe put this e to the negative first up with this e. So maybe I'll write that right now. This could be written as the opposite of e to the cos 2x minus 1. So I get opposite e to the cos 2x minus 1 minus 3 divided by negative 2. Okay. Here I'm going to divide by 1 minus y, multiply by dx. Take the antiderivative of both sides. Don't forget, on the left side, it's going to be 1 minus y to the negative first. So you're going to use log, but I need a negative 
because of the reciprocal of the coefficient of our variable. We have x cubed plus c. Take the opposite of both sides. Take e to the power of both sides. I get absolute 1 minus y equals e to the negative x cubed plus c, which turns into e to the c times e to the negative x cubed, which turns into c e to the negative x cubed. Plug in 1, 1, get rid of the absolute value, make that right side plus or minus, ignore the plus or minus, so I get 0 equals c e to the negative first. Uh, that's not going to work out well. That's giving me that c is 0, which means like y equals 0. So let's change this. Um, One zero. So if it's one zero, it'd be C E to the negative first over one, which would be same as C over E multiplied by E. E is equal to C. So one minus Y equals e e to the negative x cubed, which can be written as e to the negative x cubed plus 1. Subtract 1, divide by negative 1. I'll have negative e to the negative x cubed plus 1 plus 1. Okay. Okay. Uh, this problem was from the 2016 AB for your response test. This is a good one. It's going to involve logs and e's, but it's a very atypical nine-point problem. First part, two points. All of our free response problems on our AP test are going to be worth nine. Second part is going to be worth two. This part is going to be worth five. Okay, so when you see your test on Friday or Monday, be ready for questions like this. And, you know, don't fail on part A and part B and just do part C and don't not do part C because you're automatically only going to get four points out of the nine. So slope fields first. Pick some points. Let's pick zero, zero. That slope is going to be zero. Zero, one. So I'll have... Um, well, let's pick when y is 0. When y is 0, I have a slope of 0. 0, 1, I'm going to have 1 over negative 1. So that's negative 1. 0, 2, I'll have 4 over negative 1. So negative 4. Make sure it's steeper. 2, 1. I'll have a slope of positive 1. 2, 2, I'll have a slope of positive 4. All right, part B. We should not be intimidated by this part. We did this two units ago. We even did some last unit uh, when we are finding equations of tangent lines, and we're using them to approximate function values. Okay, so let's say we know the solution, but we don't know it. Write the equation of the tangent line to the graph of our solution at x equals 2. Use your equation to approximate f of 2.1. Well, they give you a point, and we remember this is for part b. For a tangent equation, we need a point and a slope. To fill in y minus y1 equals m, times x minus x1. Well, they already gave us the 2, 3. The slope comes from your tangent slope generator at the point. Many students forget this. They think they plug in dy dx and it goes there. No, it's the tangent slope generator, which is dy dx. My tangent slope generator generates a tangent slope 
generate your tangent slope at 2, 3. So if I plug in 2, 3, I get 9 over 1, which is 9. All right, there's my tangent equation at 2, 3. Use it to approximate f of 2.1. f of 2.1 will be approximately 9 times 2.1 minus 2 plus 3, which is 9 times 0.1 plus 3, which is 0.9 plus 3, which is 3.9. Okay? Two points there. Moving to part C, five-pointer. Find the solution to the differential equation. All right, well, we have our differential equation. Find the particular solution to the differential equation. When you read this, you think, oh, okay, I want a y equals equation whose derivative is this. So we separate variables. Make sure you know where to start. There's too many times students just don't know what to start when you're asked to solve a differential equation. And all of a sudden you get plus zero. You will get plus one for correctly separating your variables. I divide by y squared, I multiply by dx. You'll get one point for each antiderivative. 1 over y squared, the antiderivative is not log absolute y squared. You rewrite this as y to the negative second. You use the power rule to get you negative 1 over y, or negative 1 y to the negative first. On the right side, the antiderivative of 1 over x minus 1 is log absolute x minus 1. I do not need a reciprocal of a coefficient because there's no coefficient of our variable x. I do know that this is x minus 1 to the first power. So I get this. Don't forget your plus c. Maybe we solve for our, our point right now. Point is 2, 3. I get negative 1 third equals the log of 2 minus 1, which is 1 plus c. We must know that the log of 1 is 0. We get c is negative 1 third. So plus 1s are for the correct antiderivative. Finding c, you'll get another plus 1. And then the final step will be to solve for y correctly. Maybe take the opposite of both sides. And then what I like to do is flip both sides. But be careful. The right side is over 1. When you flip both sides, that 1 third doesn't get flipped to 3. It's that it ends up in the denominator. Okay. And this is totally satisfactory. This is fine. You will get plus one to finish off the five points there. But you could simplify if you wanted to by multiplying the top and bottom by three so that you got rid of the fraction. You do not have to do this for free response, but for multiple choice, be prepared to simplify like this. You get negative 3 log x minus 1 plus 1 times 3. Okay? All right, next question. We have like four of these. Okay, getting us ready for our free response portion of our test. Do not take these lightly. Do not not do these problems. All right, so they gave us a slope field. They asked, sketch the solution curve through the point zero, 0,1. This is probably worth only one point. So here's zero, 0,1, and just do your best to follow the curve and the slopes. That's tricky. I feel like it wants to go like this, but it's, it's like, sometimes does, sometimes doesn't. All right, so we got plus one there. Uh, part B may be worth like three points instead of two. It might be worth two, and then that means part C is worth six possibilities. Uh, not sure 
let's say this is worth three and this is still worth five. <clears throat> so we're going to write the equation of the tangent line uh, passing the point zero one. So again, let's do part B over here. I'm looking for y minus y1 equals an m times an x minus x1. Equations of tangent lines. We have the point zero one, so y minus one equals x minus zero. M. M comes from dy dx. It'd be dy dx at the point zero one. I plug in one for y, zero for x. I get two. M is Two. It is not an equation, it is a value, a tangent slope. I'm using this equation to approximate f of point two. f of point two is approximately two times point two plus one. This is going to be point four plus one, which is one point four. Okay, so that's probably going to be worth like two points, maybe three, to the solution to our differential equation, which will be worth five points. All right, let's start with our differential equation, three minus y cos, uh, cos x. This is a good one. Separate your variables. So I'm going to divide by 3 minus y. Don't distribute. This is very important. Do not distribute. I didn't say this earlier, but I hope you didn't fall into the trap of distributing. Don't distribute ever. If you distribute, you won't be able to separate your variables. You can't like add and subtract to separate your variables. You have to multiply or divide. So maybe a quick note, do not distribute. Good. So we're ready to take the antiderivative of both sides. Don't get caught. This is three minus y to the negative first. So it's log absolute three minus y but I need a negative because of the coefficient of the y. Antiderivative of cosine is positive sine. Let's go ahead and solve for y, at least most of the way. Take the opposite of both sides, take e to the power, make sure you're taking the power of the entire side. Here I'd have absolute three minus y equals e to the negative sine x plus c, which is equal to e to the c times e to the negative sine x, which is equal to c e to the negative sine x. So I got absolute 3 minus y equals c e to the negative sine x. And then you can plug in 0, 1. Literally, we're getting rid of these absolute values. We turn this into a plus or minus. But I'm going to get rid of the plus or minus to solve the equation. f of 0 is 1. So I got 3 minus 1 equals c e to the sine of 0 is 0. So I get c is equal to 2. Very advantageous that we have c in this position. Subtract 3 divided by negative 1. So going over the point distribution, one point for separating your variables, one point for each correct antiderivative, using and finding C, one point for solving for Y. All right, this is from the 2013 AB test. We only got two parts, so this is a probably plus three plus six situation unless I'm leaving off another part, <laughs> who knows. So part A, write an equation for the line tangent. Be careful, it doesn't ask you to solve this differential equation. It just asks you to write the equation of a tangent line. So I need this. 
I need my point, one zero. I need my slope. So dy dx at one zero, e to the zero, three minus six, negative three. Are you going to use that tangent line to approximate f of 1.2? So that's going to be negative 3. 1.2 minus 1 plus 0. So that's negative 3 times 0. 0.2. That's going to be negative, it's going to be 0. 0.6. Yep. Part B, solve. Separate our variables. I'm going to go ahead and just do this first step right here. I'm going to divide by e to the y. I'm going to multiply by dx. That's worth one point. Hit I drive both sides. We've done this one before. Remember, it's e to the negative y. So the antiderivative will be negative e to the negative y. Right side, 3x squared minus. Uh, x cubed minus 3x squared plus c. You take the opposite of both sides. Gets baked into the plus c. And then take the natural log of the entire side. On the left side, log of e to the negative y is negative y. On the right side, I got log of negative x cubed plus 3x squared plus c, making sure everything is inside. I can get rid of this negative and pop it over there. I got the point 1, 0. When x is 1, y is 0. So 0 equals negative log negative 1 plus 3 plus c. 1, 0. OK. So I get 0. I don't have to worry about this negative. I can get rid of the negative because it's just divide by a negative. It's gone. I got 2 plus c. To solve for c, take e to the power of both sides. e to the 0, 1. e to the log of stuff. This is the stuff. Gives me c is negative 1. Gives me my final equation, y equals negative log negative x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1. All right. This is from the 2012 test. This is our last problem. I like this problem because it's got different things. It's got b's and t's rather than y's and x's. We may see something like this on our test. We cannot be afraid, OK? Let's go straight to part c solving this differential equation. Once again, assume there are y's and x's, you know, like treat them the same. We want to get our b's with db. I'm going to divide by 100 minus b to get it with db. I'm going to multiply by dt to get this. I can take the antiderivative. The antiderivative on the right side, it's not going to be 1 fifth x. It's going to be 1 fifth t, because I'm taking the antiderivative with respect to t. The antiderivative of the left side, this is 100 minus b to the negative first. Treat it just like y's. It'll be log absolute 100 minus b. But don't forget this negative because of the reciprocal of the coefficient of our variable, this negative b. OK, we got uh, to solve. I got to get rid of this negative first before I take e to the power of both sides. So this is negative 1 fifth t plus c. Now take e to the power of both sides. Make sure the entire right side is taken to the power. I got 100 minus b equals e to the negative 1 fifth t plus c, which is e to the c times e to the negative 1 fifth t, which is c e to the negative 150. 
we can get rid of the absolute value, make this plus or minus, but then we can get rid of the plus or minus when we solve using the initial condition 0, 20. So when t is 0, b is 20. So 100 minus 20 equals c e to the 0. c has got to be equal to 80. giving us 100 minus b equals 80 e to the negative 1 t. Subtract 100, divide by negative 1. b is equal to negative 80 e to the negative 1 t plus 100. Okay? So, um, notice it's really the same. Let's go back to parts a and b and c. The bird bird gaining weight faster when it weighs 40 grams or when it weighs 70 grams. Let's think about this. So the rate at which the baby bird gains weight is proportional to the difference between its adult weight and its current weight. Don't let that confuse you. At t equals zero, when the bird is first weighed, its weight is 20 grams. If b of t is the weight of the bird, then db dt is the rate of change of the weight of the bird. Okay, is the bird gaining weight faster at 40 or at 70? Let's just compare dBDTs at 40. We get one fifth times 60 and 70. I get one fifth times 30. It's gaining weight faster when it weighs 40 grams. That should make sense. It's kind of like younger, it's growing up, it's going to be gaining weight faster than when it's older. So good, that makes sense. So B equals 40 because DB DT at B equals 40 is greater than DB DT at B equals 70. Okay? Explanation, we're fine. Part B, find d squared b over dt squared and use it to explain why the graph of b cannot example, resemble the following graph. Okay, so we're going to take the derivative with respect to t of db dt just for, what's that for? So I got the derivative of one-fifth. Now, you know what? It's actually going to be easier if I distribute now. Why? Because. Now, this is important. Um, taking the derivative with respect to t. This gives me d, b, d squared b over dt squared. But derivative of 20 is 0. The derivative of negative 1 fifth b is not negative 1 fifth. Because I'm taking the derivative with respect to t, I need a db dt. Which means this can be written instead of as db dt, but can be written as one fifth, 100 minus b. Now, knowing the second derivative is this, why can't our graph resemble that? Well, notice that our weights are between 20 and 100. If I plug in anything between 20 and 100, d squared b over dt squared is negative for b's between 20 and 100. Therefore, b must be concave down. I'll write that down. everywhere. The graph is not concave down everywhere. All right. Uh, please take these problems, especially this one, seriously. Don't just neglect it because you may see something like this on the test. All of these free response problems do not neglect. You will see free response problems. We'll have a portion of the test worth like around 50% that will be free response problems. Thank you.